Welcome to day two of the soft knitting challenge and we are about to knit our heel flap. So I have just finished the last round of my leg and removed my marker. I've only knit the leg to three inches because this is a demonstration sock but hopefully you have knit yours to the size specified in the pattern. So we're going to have a little bit of a chat now about what we're going to be doing next. So your heel flap is knit in a lot of patterns on half of the stitches of your leg. So in this pattern I'm going to be knitting my heel flap on 22 stitches of my total 44. So on one side you're going to have your instep stitches and they are going to be left alone so they're 22. And then you have the other 22 which will go on and become your heel flap. So you just get ready to work. There's something to note here though is that you are going to be knitting your stocking stitch back and forth in rows rather than around and around. So that's one of the differences here is that it's going to be stocking stitch knit row per row as opposed to all knit rounds. So you're about to start and you just you place back your marker into the round work and that is just going to tell you as you knit back where you are going to come back to and you'll be taking it out in a minute it'll become much clearer in a second. So the first thing you do is you knit across the 22 stitches that are going to make up your heel flap. Obviously if you are making a different size you will knit across the number of stitches specified in the pattern. So you just work these stitches as normally as you as if you were going to be knitting around but obviously you don't continue once you've knit the 22 stitches. So we'll just have a quick check. Almost there. So I've now knit the 22 stitches of my heel flap. And instead of continuing on, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the work and get ready to purl back. But before I do that, I'm going to show you a little trick that I follow. I'm going to place an open stitch marker into the work after the row I've just made. And that marks the first row of my heel flap. And what's really useful when you place a marker like this is that it allows you to know how many rows you've done in your heel flap. Because it's easy enough to count a full round, but when you're working them flat and you can't really tell where they were, before, where your rounds became rows, it can be a little bit tricky. So I find it really useful to use a marker. You can also use the marker then afterwards to know how many stitches you've lit in your leg, which will allow you to match your stitches together. And here's a sock I prepared earlier just to show this. So this is one I've done earlier, and that is where I placed the marker. So I knew that when I was knitting the sock to match it, I knew I needed 19 rows of stocking stitch. And that's just a kind of a neat little thing. And you can also do that on the feet of your socks. And that'll tell you after you've finished your shaping and before your toe, how many rows you need to knit as well. It's quite motivating as well when you come to knit your socks, if you know how many rows you have, when you, and it helps you avoid a little bit of second sock syndrome. So back to my heel flap. So I've knit across and now on one side of my marker I have a set of stitches that I'm not going to touch. Those are your instep stitches and it's really important to know that. So now I'm going to work back. I'm going to slip my stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. It's really important and it is specified in the pattern that you purl the stitch, that it's a slip stitch and that you move, you slip it purlwise but make sure you slip those stitches and why you do that will become really obvious when we show you the full flap and, bef and when we move on to do the gusset pickup. So I'm now just going to purl back and as I've said before this is to do with stocking stitch being knit flat. So instead of being on knit rounds it's a knit row and a purl row. So you knit back to your marker and then you can take the marker out as you come to it. Now it is a little bit fiddly because with the sock wonder where you have one needle longer than the other, your little needle is not quite as usable as the longer needle, but it's something you get used to as you go. So I take away my marker and now next time when I come back, I'll be able to see the gap between them. As you can see here, it's much more obvious where that gap is. You can also count the stitches as you're knitting the rows to make sure you don't skip that gap, but it's very obvious where the gap is. And if you knit across it, you will see a very definite hole. So you slip the yarn, parallelize with the yarn and back this time because you're going to be knitting the next stitch. So do that again. And then you knit across that row again. 
So that's how the heel is formed with a slip stitch, a knit, a row, slip stitch, purl a row. Although the first row is just all knit. So a little note about heels is that this is a plain stocking stitch heel. You get reinforced heels as well, um, like there's an eye of partridge heel. Um, and the reason they're reinforced is that if you the heels and feet of socks are where they would tend to wear out quick, most quickly for most people. And here now you can just see the slip stitch. And the reason that um, you reinforce them is if you are heavy duty on them. I would knit a few pairs of socks and see how you wear them before committing to reinforced heels because sometimes it can change the shape of your sock. And here I'm just showing you what would happen if it looks a bit funny when you slip your stitch with the yarn around it. It creates a little bump which you don't want. You want it to be a very plain slip stitch. So now I'm going to work back across now another purl row, slipping it purlwise with the yarn in front and then purling the rest of this row. So just on the reinforced heels again, you, it isn't necessary and it can change the shape of your sock. And that's just showing you the slip stitch there again. We're going to continue working purlwise and you can see my awkward little small needle. But if you don't want to swap to double pointed needles, which you could do your heel turn, which is how I do mine, then this needle is perfectly adequate for doing it. So you work across in purl. What you're going to be doing now is you're going to work all of the rows in the heel flap. I'm knitting the first size in the DK pattern, so I'll be doing 18 rows. So that'll be nine knit, nine purl. And then I will be coming on to do the heel turn and I'll show you the flap before I do that. I'll just finish this row, show you what it looks like now, and then we'll skip forward a little bit to where I finish the flap. So here you can see that it's beginning to form already. You can see that it's going down along the back of the work. You can see that it's separate to the stitches on the other side, which you're doing nothing with. And you are now ready to continue working the flap to the length required in the pattern. And I will be back once I've that worked. So you have now worked all the rows in the flap. And you can see here now that it has grown all the way back down the back of the leg and you have done all of your rows. And what's really interesting here is you will see at the side all of your slip stitches and you will then also see that it goes down the back on half of the stitches with the other half of the stitches unworked at the front. So here again, you can see your marker and how useful it is for counting your rows. And that's it. That is your heel flap. We're now ready to work the heel turn where you will take it from being vertical to being horizontal to go around the bottom of your heel. Thank you for listening. I will see you tomorrow for day three and the heel turn tutorial.